If you just purchased a 2025 Sierra Denali EV, not only have you just purchased yourself a nice new truck, you've also purchased an absolute powerhouse. But it's one with a trick, and one that will actually power your house, because this is General Motors' first bi-directional charging vehicle. And all that happens right back here at the charge port, where power can come in, and power can also come out, should you end up losing electricity at home. Excuse the lighting and also maybe a bit of an echo, but today we're out in the garage. But it's a garage fitted out with General Motors' newest products from one of their newest divisions, GM Energy. And we're gonna start right here with their new charger. This product is called the GM PowerShift, and it's capable of 19.2 kilowatts of level two AC charging out to that Sierra EV, which coincidentally is able to take up to 19.2 kilowatts of level two charging. But what makes this different than other chargers is that this is designed for bi-directional charging. If over 19 kilowatts is too rich for your panel's blood, like it might be for mine at home, you are able to derate this unit and still use it for that bi-directional charging capacity. But as I mentioned, this is just a piece of the puzzle, so let's go cover some of the rest of it. This next piece is what General Motors calls the enablement bundle, and it is purchased separately from that wall charger. So if you want that wall charger, but not this, you can do those things separately. Or if for some other reason you want to do it piecemeal, maybe it's a budgetary issue, you are able to go incrementally into this system. But what we have here is essentially your inverter and your power hub, or really a sub panel. On the inverter, that's handling the power going in and out. And one thing to note is that the power coming out is gonna be maxed out at 9.6 kilowatts, which honestly should be enough for most homes. If it's not enough for your entire home, that's gonna be where this power hub kicks in because this power hub is what denotes what is and isn't powered when you lose power and you are now being run by your truck. So let's say it's some of the bare essentials. You want your basic lighting, maybe it's an emergency heater, maybe it's all the heating because you have enough overhead, or you really, really, really need to get those dishes done. If that's something you won't sacrifice, you can go ahead and run it through this. Just know 9.6 is all gonna be able to run out of that truck at this time. Emergency backup is a great thing to have, but what if it's not an emergency and you still wanna take advantage of things like the solar panels you already have in your home? Well, that's where this battery storage solution from General Motors is gonna come in and it comes in three different sizes. Right now it's a 10.6, 17.7, or 35.7 kilowatt hours of storage. And it's going to be seamlessly integrated into this energy ecosystem. But it is gonna operate differently from that truck because this will be functional even when we're not talking about a power outage. As I mentioned, this can be great for people who have solar or are considering solar, but also if you have time of use and you really wanna make the most of the energy available, you'd be able to store some of that power while it's cheaper and then utilize it later in the day. It will also be part of that home battery backup should your power go out, it'll kick on right away. And then should this run out, it would then go ahead and pull from the truck. So between all of these products, you have some pretty great solutions for home battery storage. But there are a couple drawbacks. First and foremost, everything comes with the price. So looking at GM Energy's website right now, it shows that you can get the entire bundle starting at $12,700. That's gonna include your charger, inverter, hub, and energy storage. Though GM right now is running the sale through December 2nd, 2024, you can purchase this entire bundle starting at $9,200, which is some pretty significant savings. And it is worth mentioning that the GM power bank, that energy storage, is eligible for the 30% federal tax credit but with any of these tax credits, I recommend you talk to your CPA before you start counting on those savings. Now I wanna dive just a little bit deeper because we start with the first link in the chain. That's gonna be the PowerShift charger. And that starts with a retail price before the current sale of $16.99. And the fact is, this is a high powered charger at 19.2 kilowatts, but those do already exist in the market and you can get those less expensive than $16.99. The other argument that I might make is that 19.2 is probably more charging than you actually need. And though you can derate this one, you're also able to get significantly less expensive level two chargers at that 11.5 kilowatts. And a great example of this is gonna be the Tesla Universal Wall Connector, which is also going to be bi-directional capable. Now, obviously they're gonna have their own system at Tesla and GM has their own, but the fact is that on this piece for piece, that Tesla comes in quite a bit less expensive, even though admittedly, it's not going to be nearly as high powered of a charger. If you wanted to break things down a little bit further, there are some other bi-directional chargers out there, but they're not going to be manufacturer created or warranted. So that's one of those things that at this point, I would probably be a little bit wary of, but these all do come out. The whole point here is that that PowerShift charger isn't gonna be the best deal, but 
understandably, it's not horrendously priced. Now, the next piece of this puzzle is actually not going to be in the middle chain, which I would consider the inverter and the hub. It comes down to that power bank. And the power bank starts out with a total energy capacity on the absolute low end of just about 10.6 kilowatt hours. While that's a fair amount of storage for some everyday usage, especially if you have some renewable energy that you wanna go ahead and capture, like you wanna use the solar power while you're not at home, you are gonna be able to make the most of this 10.6 kilowatt hour system. But one of the issues is, as we scale these batteries up, we also change how much power we're able to draw from them at any given moment. Because we're not just looking at the total amount, we're looking at what do we need right now. And if you want to wash your dishes or clean your clothes off of your renewable storage, or your renewable energy, excuse me, then you might need to consider a larger pack just to be able to pull that power. Case in point, at the 10.6 kilowatt hour level, your maximum discharge is gonna be five kilowatts. And that's gonna be while you are both connected to the grid and if your power goes out. And that is worth noting because some of these are a little bit different. Now, if we bump up to the upgraded system at 17.7, we're gonna get a different output capability. And that's going to be seven kilowatts, both on grid and off grid, again, power disconnected. If you go all the way up to the top though, at the 35.4, which is two 17.7s combined, you're looking at a, while connected to the grid, 11.5 kilowatts, which is what most level two chargers are capable of and what most EVs are capable of doing. But you get a max discharge off grid of 9.6 kilowatts, which is gonna max what we have on the truck. All this to say is that if you have a larger load that you wanna do with your renewable resources, those are things you're gonna to have to juggle just a little bit. And obviously the starting price I got from GM was $7,100 for that 10.6 system. But as you increase the overall capacity, you are definitely increasing the pricing. So that's a lot of numbers and ultimately what does it all mean? Well, it means that there's a one-stop shop available to meet all of your energy needs. If you feel like this does in fact meet your needs and you're willing to pay the premium associated with a brand that really wants to make sure they're backing their product. So there's no cut rate pricing or cut rate products hopefully in their future. Now, this is gonna be a complete system. Plug your vehicle in and charge from the energy you have stored, which you brought in from solar potentially. These are great ways to utilize it. My biggest issue is that on the vehicle end of things, I don't feel like we're actually making the most of these trucks. And it's not just the trucks that are gonna be able to do this. This bi-directional charging does exist in other GM products, and it was from the beginning intended to be this way. But let's look at the max range on the Sierra EV because that's what we looked at this weekend. And what it has is over 200 kilowatt hours of capable battery storage. But you don't get to access that unless your power goes out. And I know it's probably gonna be kind of a one-off, Let's say you don't drive the truck all the time, it's there at home, and you would like to use the solar power that you generate during the day, later in the day when you're home. The only way to do that is to buy the complete system, because while you can charge your truck off of that solar, essentially through that inverter system, you're not able to capture any of it to use at your convenience, it's only gonna be if your power runs out. And yes, there could be some DIY way to make it work even though it's not supposed to, but that's not one I would ever recommend. And you are also able to do off-board power, not from this charging system, but in a system like this, it makes sense to do plug and play as often as you can. However, there is a way to make more use of that power based on a system you may already have. If you have a home generator, you can essentially use that same connection from the truck and use that as your power source out. And honestly, that feels like a bit of a shortcut that depending on what your needs are, might work better than what currently exists. It just feels like it gives you a little bit better access to that power, even though obviously you would still be making a big switch from main panel power to over to your truck. I can understand why GM wouldn't want you constantly charging and discharging from those batteries because obviously that's going to increase the duty cycle of this product and they have this product warranted, but it's meant to be warranted when you're driving. Still, that's a lot of battery, and chances are you aren't gonna use that on a regular basis, certainly not on a daily basis, and I wanna make sure that I'm getting the most out of my product, and this one feels just a little bit limiting. This isn't an entirely new concept, but it is one that General Motors is on the forward wave of. Because yes, there are systems that can be compiled, there are systems that work together, but there are very few with an OEM manufacturer stamp of approval, much less their name on top of the entire system. Finally, there's branding, because this is a GM Energy product that works seamlessly with your GM electric vehicle, but what about in the future? 
And my first thought here is what about the connectors? Because if I leased my GM vehicle in a couple years, when I go replace it with the exact same like model, it is likely coming with a different plug. And if that doesn't match up with what I have at home, how does it all work? And it sounds like there is work being done in this area. Whether it's gonna be with a simple adapter or you have a whole replacement cable, they should be able to use those things moving forward, although there may need to be some modifications. I do expect GM to handle all those, so we'll just see how that plays out in the next few years. The bigger question, and the one that General Motors doesn't really wanna talk about, understandably, is what happens if you purchase a non-GM vehicle for your next car? Or maybe you already have two electric vehicles, how can you utilize this system with the other car you have in the driveway? Well, first and foremost, this is kind of broken up by piece because a charger is just a charger. So as long as you have either the same connector or the appropriate adapter, that will always be able to be an electric vehicle charger. That's not really an issue or something to worry about. It does become a fairly expensive charger if that's all it's doing, but a charger nonetheless. Now, if you go with the energy storage and you've gone the entire system, if you go away from the GM ecosystem on vehicle side, well, you'll still have your inverter, you'll still have your hub, you'll still have your energy storage, and you will still be able to charge your car. The limitation there is that you can't use your car's power to go ahead and run your home. And again, this is already a bit of a limitation, but I don't wanna spend a lot of money on something that I'm gonna put in my house for ideally a very long time. These batteries have a 10 year warranty on them and not be able to maximize the, the effectiveness of my purchase. I did ask and General Motors said that they are building this ecosystem to be a wholly complete ecosystem, which means within and not without. And I can understand this, but if you ended up purchasing kind of the middle option, which is the charger and the enablement bundle, the connectivity function that allows your car to be the energy backup, if you went away from the GM family, you now have two pieces of equipment, that inverter and that hub, essentially doing nothing for you. And honestly, that would be a very frustrating situation to be in. But it's not too different than what we see with cell phones. I have a Samsung, and there are a lot of Apple products that will not work correctly or at all with my phone, and vice versa. If you go from Apple and you switch over to Samsung and you throw in your AirPods, you're not getting the same functionality. But that's a bit different because that's a $1,000 phone at, you know, well, at best, but that $1,000 phone and the $150, $200 earphones are very different than a multi-thousand dollar piece of equipment that, again, is now essentially useless. And not even not working the right way or all the features accessible, if you go with that middle bundle, you paid $5,600 for essentially nothing. And that's where things get frustrating for me. There's a lot going on here and a lot of people who may or may not be interested, let me know in the comment section below if you are looking for a whole home energy system and if this is something you'd be interested in or if you have one and you're looking to upgrade, is this along the path of what you're interested in or is there something else that you're not getting out of your current that this is also not meeting? Let me know down in the comments. I am just as curious as you are, but luckily I have access to that GM team and I will continue to ask them questions whenever I get the opportunity. Thank you so much for watching. Again, any other thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, leave those down in the comment section. And until next time, I'll see you down the road.